pigs, pottery, race courses, race riots, and possibly the most heinous thing of all, Hugh Grant. I've come to Notting Hill. There's no cross in Charing Cross. There's no White Chapel in White Chapel. The the Haymarket and the Mayfair have left. You know, you get the idea. But the one thing you can say about Notting Hill is that it is reassuringly a hill. There have been a lot of claims thrown around regarding the naming of the hill, but probably it's just named after a family that lived here in Saxon times, the descendants of the Notta family presumably getting a kickback every time one of these fridge magnets is sold. I think in this era of mistruths and fake news of drones that may or may not be flying around Gatwick or tourists who may or may not be innocently visiting Salisbury Cathedral, there is something reassuring and comforting about a place being exactly what it says it is. Now, I think it's time we talked about Middlesex. No, I'm not turning this into a channel about gender identity issues. I'm talking about the much sexier ancient administrative and ceremonial county of Middlesex, although incidentally, pride. Middlesex was the county that the City of London and later the City of Westminster, the seeds of our great capital, were sown in, but they quickly would become so powerful themselves that they didn't really have anything to do with the county and effectively governed themselves. The unstoppable urban bluff that we now refer to as London grew out from those two cities in the 1600s and just kept expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding and eventually there was no middle sex left, only a left sex and a right sex now. <coughs> um, it was only in the 1960s when finally middle sex looked itself in the mirror and accepted it didn't actually exist anymore and it became part of Greater London. So really up until maybe the 1800s, no one would have called this London, you know, Notting Hill was just a place in Middlesex, and to be honest with you, it wasn't really that nice. Its nickname was the Potteries and Piggeries, which, as I'll go on to explain, was both uh, an unimaginative nickname, but also very accurate. This area would have been completely covered with kilns, like this one behind me, which is the, the only one that's left. Uh, see, the soil here is particularly ripe London clay, which is excellent for making things like bricks, and hence this area became known as the Potteries. The Piggeries is not an allusion to the financial industry, but referred to what happened as urban expansion kicked pig farmers further west out of London. They'd build little shacks here and have hordes of pigs wandering the areas in and around the dugout clay pits, which would become filled with stagnant water and pig slurry. What's now the very charming Avondale Park used to be called the Ocean because it was a particularly large, several feet deep pool of this special Notting Hill brew. Um, and it still smells a little bit. But, as Aragorn, son of Arathorn, once said to Haleth, son of Hama, there is always hope. But in this case, that hope wasn't the very convenient return of Gandalf with reinforcements. It was a property developer called James Well Ladbroke. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh. Ah. Ah. He owned a lot of land around Notting Hill and started to build a polite little suburb until he ran out of cash. Now in the 1800s there was no Kickstarter, you actually had to do something in order for people to give you money and so what he ended up doing was selling a chunk of his land to a race course. The Kensington Hippodrome is what it was known as. Hippodrome by the way is Greek for horse race course and isn't anything to do with hippos. Interestingly, the term Hippodrome drifted in meaning after that, and any casino or theatre or place of entertainment that wished to sound a little bit grand and Victorian started calling itself a Hippodrome. Hippopotamus means horse of the river and isn't anything to do with Notting Hill, but I have hidden a hippo somewhere in this video, so watch close and if you see it, leave a comment below for a special prize. As I was saying, the Kensington Hippodrome was laid out all over there. It's no longer the best view, but imagine, you know, we're standing on the crest of a hill and the course was laid out all around us. Um, St John's Church was built on the so-called natural grandstand that is Notting Hill, but that's roughly where the positive attributes of the site run out. That same Notting Hill feces laden mushy clay was still washing around and apparently the snowflake horse jockeys refused to drive their horses through it, so the course was unusable for much of the year. 
and when it was used, the destitute and rather odorous residents of the potteries and piggeries, whose home, bear in mind, is now surrounded by horse stables and racecourse buildings, they kept invading the course and upsetting the patrons who would run away in horror from the smelly local population. So the course didn't last and eventually houses were built all over the land. Many, many sources claim that the curved shape of the streets of Notting Hill reflect the shape of the race course. But it doesn't. Like, it just doesn't. You know, look, look at the map. The race course wasn't laid out in concentric circles, you know. The, the street shape now is more like a... It's more like a... Mind the gap. Oh my god. Sadly, there is a little more history to Notting Hill that's less than harmonious. In 1958, there was a series of racially motivated riots here, probably triggered by the attack of a woman called Madgebit Morrison, who was married to a Jamaican man. Hundreds of basically white men attacked the West Indian residents of the area in a series of disturbances that went on for several weeks, during which time, obviously, the attacked residents started fighting back. The story does have a bit of a silver lining, though. It soon sparked the first Caribbean carnival in the area, which would eventually become the Notting Hill Carnival, now attended by millions of people each year. Not by me, though, you know, touching people, talking to people, dancing. No, no, no. Now, where can one find Mr. Banks, Jessica Fletcher and Bruce Forsyth having a dance-off with several stereotypes you wouldn't get away with today? The Real Answer is a studio in California, but they were pretending to be on Portobello Road. Portobello Road? Yeah, the street where the riches of ages are... So, no, no musical sequences, we've been over this. Duh. Continuing the unglamorous history of the area, the road used to connect a bunch of gravel pits Hmm. to the village of Kensal Green ah. and was named after a military victory at the Panama town of Puerto Bello which probably sounds better in the correct accent In the 1800s with the influx of all these newer wealthier residents to the area Puerto Bello Road was where they would come to the market stalls and shops of the more working class longer standing residents of the area and really, it's this street that now sort of defines Notting Hill for a lot of people. It played a large part in that film I'm reticent to talk about. After all, I'm just a boy standing in front of a camera asking you to subscribe. No, really, subscribe. Because it's not exactly had a positive effect on the area. I mean, look here. Here's the famous bookshop, except now it's a cheap souvenir store and not a bookshop at all. And the prices aren't actually that cheap either. This is the restaurant I believe they frequent, except now it's a cards and gift shop. This is Hugh Grant's house, except it isn't Hugh Grant's house. It's the door to somebody else's house. Yeah. You know, what? Why is this interesting? What? Why are people here? What? Why am I here? What an absolute waste! I've wandered over towards Notting Hill Gates, largely because it's my way home, but also because there are some interesting bits over here. Um, the name itself, Notting Hill Gate, alludes to the turnpike system, where once there would have been a toll gate which would have charged money to any traffic passing through. Um, these were all over London and they were probably about as annoying as they sound. You know, think of the congestion charge, but for your horse and cart. On this main road is the charming Coronet Cinema, which started off as a theatre, then was a cinema, and is now a theatre again. And was also featured in the motion picture Notting Hills. Oh, enough. And around the corner is the famous Churchill Arms pub. Which, if I'd come in the summer months instead of the coldest day of the year, would be even more impressively decked out in thousands of pounds worth of flowers. They claim that they were the first pub in London to serve Thai food, and whilst I can't know that for sure, I can promise you that I've been in, and I've eaten it, and I can verify that it is definitely food. So with a souvenir fridge magnet in my pocket and a, a Thai curry in my belly, I will take my leave. By the way, my landlord rang and he said that if you don't share the video, like and subscribe, he's going to kick me and my 12 children out onto the street. So consider that carefully before you cross this video off. Uh, and I look forward to your comments and whether you find the hippo in the video or not. Um, see you later. Oh, and I just need to say before you click on all these things, due to my actual job using up more and more of my so-called free time over the next few months, I'm going to find it quite difficult to make videos. But bear with me, I will be back.
Oh, we, we've still got time left. Uh, keep smiling. A bit awkward. Um, thanks for watching. That was bad. <laughs>